Let's take a look at the Q final state. What we're going to do is create a non-looping state, meaning something that has a beginning and something that has an end. Our last example, we had this nice loop, and it just kept going and going. We're going to take this arrow out of here. So we're going to have about 10 states, and then something called a Q final state. You may be asking yourself, why do you need a Q final state? Well, that's a very good question. If you dive into the documentation, it gets a little bit confusing, and they point you right back to Q state, and it says the signal is emitted when a final child state has entered, meaning it points you right back to Q final state, and it just goes back and forth, and you're trying to figure out what the, really the difference here is. Really what you need to understand is that when Q final state is entered, it emits a special signal letting the state machine framework know we are now done, stop running. That's really all it does. Super confusing the way they did that, and you notice how the Q final state inherits Q abstract state, not Q state. Ugh, frustrating. All right, same interface as last time, but now we're gonna do a linear state instead of a looping state. We are going to, just to save a bit of time, do some copy and paste action on some of the more simple code. Q dialog, Q state machine, Q state, Q debug, Q final state, Q abstract state, and message box. So the premise here being, when we run this, we're going to click this, and it's going to go through all the states and display them here. And when we're done, it's going to say complete, disable this button, and pop open a message box so that we know beyond the shadow of a doubt we are done with our state machine. So we're going to have some slots, and then I'm going to have in some private stuff here. So I'm going to have the Q state machine. I'm going to have a Q list of Q abstract states called states and a function called add state. So let's right click and I am, I want a special note here, kind of doing this the hard way just to really illustrate what's going on. And I'm going to try to explain the hard and the easy way. So first things first, we need to actually create some states. To do that, we want our little add state. So I'm going to go in here, right click, and let's go add definition. Add state, its sole purpose for being is, you guessed it, we are going to add some states to that queue list. So just some boilerplate code, nothing super complicated. It looks like a big old wad of code. Let's walk through it. We're just going to say add a state. We're going to assign a property, and whenever you see the assign property, think we are changing something. So we're going to change the line edits text to whatever the state's object name is. So it's going to be like state 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, blah, blah, blah. And then i is the state's length. If we're greater than 0, meaning we're not the first state in the list, then we want to add a transition. Because we're going to have a starting point, the 0 index, we want to transition to the next and the next and the next. Then we just simply have our state entered, state exit, and state finished. Notice we're doing this on the Q state, not the Q final state. When this transitions from the last Q state in this list to the Q final state, this Q state is going to, you guessed it, emit the state finished. Whew. States append and then state machine add state. Some of the stuff I'm just kind of like mind boggled here on how all of this works because you've got to really kind of fish through the documentation to really figure it out. Let's go back up to our constructor here. And here is where we're going to just add in some boilerplate nonsense. Bang. So 0 to 10, I increment, we're going to create a state, we're going to set that object name, and we're going to call that add state, which just literally does all the connections, adds it to our state machine and our list. Special note here, states are actually children. This is what I mean by hard way and easy way. The easy way would just be the m state machine dot children, but I really wanted to separate the two so you understand what's going on under the hood here. You really don't need this queue list. You very easily could put this into the m state machine children. And it does actually do it automatically. So for example, we can say bang, the states are added as children. Let's test that out. Save run. And we have 10 children. So all those states are nice and neat right in there. Let's go down to our dialog. Whoops, got the wrong one. 
there's our deconstructor for a dialog here and all we're doing is doing our memory management if we just backboned off the state machine children we really wouldn't need to do this again I'm just holding it out there so you can see what's going on under the hood and let's go ahead and add our final state and this is where I'm going to slow down just a little bit so I'm going to say Q final state and this is going to be new Q final state again billions of different ways we can manage that memory if we really felt like it. I'm going to say Q state and let's call this P for pointer and let's go ahead and say Q object cast and we're just going to grab the last state out of that list here and I'm going to say Again, could have used the state machine children. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to add a transition. So we're going to say P, add transition. Remember, when we talk about a transition, we're talking about moving from one state to the next. So I'm going to say UI, push button, and we're going to monitor that Q, push button, clicked. And we're going to move this over to the final or the Q final state, which is going to kick off that state machine has now finished. So what I'm going to do is you guessed it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to say connect the M state machine. And we want the Q state machines finish signal. Notice how we're monitoring the state machine, not the Q final state. And let's go ahead and say state finished. This is where it gets super, super confusing. It's hard to keep track of what's actually going on here. So when the Q final state is entered, it's going to emit a signal that the state machine has connected to. The state machine then turns around and it emits its own finish signal. Super, super confusing the way it does that. All right, so let's go M state machine and let's go ahead and add our state final. Again, because it has just uh, got the children, it's just a queue list of pointers to queue objects, so it doesn't really matter. We could have put a checkbox or whatever we wanted in there. And that's why I really didn't use the children. In case somebody tries to add something in, you will very easily break your application. And then state machine. Set the initial state. And we're going to say m states at 0. So our first state is going to be our initial state. Shocking, I know. And then let's go ahead and go state machine. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. We need like some sound effect, like a chainsaw starting up or something. All right, almost done. We just need to know what exactly is going on here. I wanted to make special note of this right here. This on push button clicked is really our trigger for everything going on. If we don't have this in, like if this didn't exist and we got this by going into the UI, right click, go to slot and click. If we didn't do that, there is a high chance that this will never fire off because it just simply does not exist and it's just never emitted. It's one of those weird little gotchas with widgets. So if you're trying to do this on your own and you're not downloading the code from GitHub and you skip that step, it'll just never fire off. All right, now I've got state entered, state exited, bang, bang, entered, exit. Very, very simple. When our state finished, is fired off and I could have said state machine finish that way it was a little clearer we're gonna say Q info whatever the sender finished and then we're going to set the text of the line edit to complete set the push button enable defaults and then display a message box to the user because you know how users are they can get a little fickle and you got to tell them 30 or 40 times save and run let's check this out state 0 is our initial state and we're just gonna blast through these here one two three four five six seven eight nine and bang state machine is finished everything works as expected so if we dive in here we can see how the 
the signals and slots worked under the hood, we have just kind of started off with 10 children and then bang, 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 we've done all our entered and exits from our various states and then the state machine emits the finish signal. Very confusing the way they did that. Just understand that if you want a linear state or some sort of final state, you need to use the Q final state class, but you don't monitor this class, you monitor the Q state machine. 